3D digital art is an art that is trending more and more. Artists use 3D modeling tools such as Blender, Maya, SolidWorks to build 3D art on desktop, but there are also new 3D drawing tools such as TiltBrush or Spatiate. Today we have the pleasure to welcome Dennis Rudolph, one of the early adopters of this 3D digital art here in Berlin. Welcome. Thanks. Thank you for yeah. having me. So um, straight to the first question and why 3D digital arts? Okay, so uh, it's a long story. So, yeah. Um, so for for five years, I tried to update Rodin's Gates to Hell. Rodin, the 19th century uh, sculptor, mm -hmm. he built the Gates to Hell, which he mm -hmm. never finished. Yeah. So I planned to update it and put it in the desert in California to mark the end of Western civilization, since the Pacific is a natural limit for the expansion. And it should have been uh, a portal between realities, so between heaven and hell, let's say. Yeah? But I could never find the right medium in which to build it, yeah. because it should have been a medium which is there and not there at the same time, because yeah. the portal is, was meant to be on a threshold, threshold between realities. And then they um, put the virtual reality headsets on the market, and immediately I knew wow, that's it, you know, like yeah. I have to paint it in the virtual reality headset with one of these 3D painting tools. And then eventually I built the app, which is GPS based and mm. put the portal there in the Californian desert, which now you can see it in augmented reality on your phone. So in this way, I found a, the, the right medium in to, to paint something yeah. with my own hands because I need my own hands to create. I'm an artist, a painter, mm. and in the virtual reality glasses I can see my hand and paint in 3D. Mm. Plus, um, in the virtual reality I'm kind of on the other side and then I brought the portal back to our reality, yeah. which I created there and put it with the GPS in the desert. So. It's it's there, not there at the same time, because without the app, you don't see it. And, you know, so uh, this medium was perfect for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, it's very interesting because 3D digital art can challenge the laws of physics. You know, you can create things that maybe you cannot create um, using material, you know? Oh, yes. Yeah. And like there's never been a medium before in which you can paint in 3D, never yeah. in the history of, of art. Yeah. So that was a revelation for me that I can paint in the air, like make a line. It's my hand, you know, that makes the line and then I can walk around it and look at it. And yeah, yeah. And um, now, I mean, that's, that's, I know, like, let's say the, the cool side about, about 3D digital art and you have been doing it like for, for quite some time right now. What are still the challenges that, that you see? Well, for me personally, it's that, for instance, this the portal app, which allows you to see my artwork in the mm -hmm. desert in California. I can't get it on the App Store because the App Store denies my yeah. my app because they say it's too specific. Yeah. And they need something for a broad audience, you know, that mm -hmm. everybody can use. But you can only use it if you are in this remote area in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Know? So, um, yeah. So you have to send me like information about your phone i have to build it explicitly for your phone the app and yeah. so that's my major yeah yeah actually we, we also heard about this exact pain point from magic leap mm -hmm. so they also mentioned the same thing they have a problem letting basically artists upload their art to 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 the app store mm -hmm. because it's um too specific and also they don't want to end up imagine if you have just one artist uploading like 10 or yeah artworks mm -hmm. per year and you have like a million of artists like yeah. you will end up with uh, 100 million right. or more yeah. applications okay. that um, basically that are too specific you know yeah. yeah I mean I totally understand why they do it but it's yeah it's a kind of censorship in a way yeah which um, is also interesting for me summer so because I have to change the way I do the art or build the app you know so that I can sneak it onto the app store eventually yeah yeah, yeah. and um now we start actually see more and more this trend of um what what you have mentioned like bringing 3d art to streets you know so you install different applications and then you are walking around and then you see a 3d art exhibition 
just free in, in the streets. Um, you also did the same. Uh, where, where do you see actually this trend going and how do you think this can shape um, the, the art market? Yeah, yeah. You, you know, I run the project space State of the Art and yeah. we did the, I think it was the first augmented reality exhibition in the street. Mm where we, uh, the artworks were GPS based, yeah. so it, um, you had to approve that the app reads the GPS coordinates yeah. of your phone and then um, it was very interesting to see all these people at the opening were walking around the street and with their phones and nobody knew what these people are doing, you know, like mm. who was not yeah. part of this exhibition. And so, <coughs> so what, I, what I liked was that this completely changed the way we look at art like because we we started to use you know you need your tools your, your technical tools to mm. actually see it mm. and yeah i think that was that was very interesting for i don't know how it changes the art market i mean i think the art market in general is it's just pretty conservative and it's as it was the last 100 years or since when it exists and mm. it will it has to be exclusive, you know. So, so you, um, so somehow I would have to build the app with my hologram yeah. in that way that only this one collector can have it or see it or something. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, the way I do it now is that because I also paint because yeah. the the virtual reality aesthetics changed the way I paint in IRL, mm -hmm. so to say, and. So I connect the app with my painting. So you buy a painting and the app works only if it recognizes the painting, it loads the 3D yeah. image. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it surely will change the way exhibitions are curated. That's what I think. Yeah. But how people buy art, you have to limit it in a way. So yeah. then do, do you believe it will remain exclusive? Um, because like once you you know, once you have really an application, um, you have people visiting to basically see your arts, mm -hmm. um, just to see it, you make them download the, the application and mm -hmm. then they have the application, so they have access. Um, yeah, maybe, I mean, you know, the artist Raphael Rosendahl, he sells web pages since, mm -hmm. I don't know, 15 years or something. Mm -hmm. So the web page is available for everybody, yeah. but the collector gets a certificate that this is, and he gets the administration rights mm -hmm. or whatever, but he is not allowed to change anything or okay. take it down or something. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but that for him it works really well. Uh, he sells all these uh, internet sites, and and the collectors are very happy to like show you the site and say hey, it's mine, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, if if an artist finds a way how to do something similar with a with an app, mm. then yeah. We, we have actually talked to another artist, um, he's based in Japan and um, he's also doing like the same 3D art and um, the way he is earning money is like he's of course uh, letting people download the app and then see art in the street but then he um, collects donations, you know, from, from, from the people. He says like people who would appreciate art will be willing to give him like donations and he's this is how he's making actually his life. Mm -hmm. So he's given a lot of art for free, but getting also a lot of donations because mm -hmm. people appreciate this effort. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe it's a democratic way mm -hmm. of, um, of how do you say, um, what's the word for the guy who's, you know, paying the artist, like making a living. Um, uh, you mean democratic? Uh, demo well, it's not a, yeah, it's a kind of democratic way to yeah. sell art because yeah. or to to make a living as an artist because yeah. art is a it's exclusive and yeah. elitarian. It's for the upper class and yeah. you know so they yeah. they have the money and the time to yeah. to collect these things yes. and so. You mean it's also given access to people? Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the way he does it. You mean? Yeah. 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 The way he does yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's great, um, but uh, actually, as an artist, you only need one person who yeah. who yeah. has a lot of money and yeah. gives it to you or something. Yeah. yeah, or you need a lot of people who have like uh, little money. Yeah, I mean, yeah. then you have to be very popular. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 
sometimes I have the feeling that art and popularity they don't go together because yeah. then you're a pop artist or you yeah. are <clears throat> like yeah you are yeah uh, let, let's see but um actually also like um in the same direction would you ever consider like uploading your art for free if um somehow it generates for you um an indirect income mm. like um you know for example like to just give this um uh, like uh, analogy with with instagram like you upload pictures for free but um, somehow you are becoming more popular and then you earn money elsewhere you know mm, uh, on like instagram an influencer yes oh. yeah, yeah. Would you ever, or do you already do it? Do you upload your art on platforms like Poly or others? Yeah, but actually I only uploaded it because I needed to <clears throat> to get it into Unity or something. Okay, yeah. But like I got three likes or something. For me. Okay, yeah. But would you in general consider, do you think it's a good thing, a bad thing to upload on these platforms? Well, I mean, actually I'm, I'm not really often going through these okay. platforms. To, I mean, for, for, for your art career, it doesn't do anything. Mm. So, you know, I need an institution to frame yeah. my, my work to, yeah. you know, like a museum or a okay. Kunstverein mm. or a collection or a gallery. Mm. It's like if I put my art out there on the street or something, it doesn't help me making a career as an artist. Okay, I see. Yeah. Um, can, can you tell us more about your, um, your project? And um, where do you see it in the future, the state of the art? State of the art? Oh, well, that, that's my project space. And I always invite artists and, uh, and curators to launch exhibitions with uh, art and technology. That, mm. You know, the art at the threshold of technology, uh, yeah. how they uh, inspire each other. And, mm. um, so. Yeah, I mean, I think the next project, the next exhibition I have in mind will be digital sculptures since mm. we had digital paintings, like what mm. you saw. Yeah. And um, I, I saw there are a lot of people who, and I myself also started doing uh, 3D printing the things that I paint in mm. tilt brush. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. Yeah, and so I think that's really cool to take <clears throat> to take these um, things from the completely new medium and into an old medium like mm. sculpture or you know you can cast them in bronze after you 3d printed them or something mm. and yeah and so i think that's that's the next uh, exhibition at state of the art yeah and then i don't know what the future holds i mean i'm looking forward to the day when i don't need the devices anymore you know? yeah like i can have a lens. body core, lens you know yeah. or chip implanted or something yeah. So that we can always see the holograms, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And my artwork, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because it's really, it's always frustrating to enter my studio, mm. and that's maybe because why I also still paint in oil, is I enter my studio and it's empty, you know, because mm. all these holograms they are not visible. Yeah. And and but I need something. I need to visualize the the things I create, yeah, and yeah. I need to see them, you know. So yeah. that's why I do it, you know. And. Mm. So yeah, I hope I hope uh, Elon Musk or whoever will soon come up with a better um, better way, you know, application how to yeah. we become completely cyborgs, you know, so yeah. we can actually see these things all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. cool. So yeah, let's hope this happen, and yeah. I no, would love definitely to definitely it will happen. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think you would be also one of the early adopters. Black Mirror um, will become true. Everything yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. So looking forward and. Uh, Thanks a lot, it was yeah. really very insightful. Yeah. Thanks a lot and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and of course feel free to comment and if you want to reach out to Dennis it will be also like in the description section. So thank you very much, thanks a lot, yeah, ciao ciao.